Hare Krishna. So I welcome you all for this Brahma Samhita discussions. Today we are Shloka 42. Amo Vishnu Pada Krishna Prashta Vukale Shimati Bhakti Vikasha Swami Tinamina. Namo Vishnu Pada Krishna Prashta Vukale Shimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamina. Namaste Saraswate Deve. Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishe Shunyavadi Pasha Tadesha Tare. Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadhadar Shiva Sadi Gaur Bhaktarinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So today we are reading Shloka 42 of Brahma Samhita. Ananda Chinmaya Rasat Mataya Manasum, Yafraninam Pratifalam Smaratam Upetyam, Lila Itena Buhanani Jayatya Jasram, Govinda Madi Purusham, Tamaham Bajami. Translation I worship Govinda, the primeval Lord, whose glory ever triumphantly dominates the mundane world by the activity of his own pastimes, being reflected in the minds of recollecting souls as the transcendental entity of ever blissful cognitive rasa. Okay, so this is the translation of the shloka. We'll read uh, word to word, meaning that becomes a little more focused for us and clear. Ananda, blissful. Chinmaya means cognitive. Rasa, of rasa, atmataya. Due to being the entity, manasu, in the minds. Yaha, he who, praninam, of living entities. Pratifalan, being reflected. Smaratam upetya, recollecting. Lilaitena, by the pastimes. Bhuvanani, the mundane world. Jayati. Triumphantly dominates Ajasram, ever. Govindamadi Purusham Tamaham Bajam. So here the shloka says, I worship Govinda, primeval Lord, whose glory ever triumphantly dominates mundane world by activity of his own pastimes. Basically, Krishna's transcendental pastimes dominate, attracts everyone in this world, the, the most attractive pastimes he displays. This is Ananda Chinmaya, being reflected in the minds of recollecting souls, smaratam upetya. For those devotees who remember them, these lilas, they are always absorbed in Krishna. They're fully Krishna conscious. And Lord appears um, in their mind. Transcendental, or blissful, cognitive rasa. Purport. In the purpose says like this, those who constantly recollect in accordance with spiritual instruction, the name, figure, attributes, and pastimes of the form of Krishna, appearing in the amorous rasa, whose loveliness vanishes to God of mundane love, conqueror of all mundane hearts, are alone meditators of Krishna. So this is what he said here, that those devotees who are constantly absorbed in Krishna's nama, rupa, guna, and lila of the Lord, which is particularly manifest in amorous rasa. Ananda Chidmaya rasa refers to Madhurya rasa, Ujwala rasa. So those devotees who are very advanced, who meditate on those pastimes of Krishna, they are real meditators, are alone meditators of Krishna. Huh? And what is that? Um, so attractive. How attractive are his pastimes, whose loveliness vanish the god of mundane love. The Krishna is so attractive, his form, his character, his qualities, his pastimes are so attractive, particularly this Madhurya Rasa is so attractive that even the Cupid is attracted by it. You know? Whose loveliness vanished the god of mundane love, conqueror of all mundane hearts. Everyone is conquered by the attraction to the opposite sex, by the Cupid's arrows. And here the Cupid himself is conquered by Krishna. He, this is the form which is most attractive of all forms displayed even in spiritual world, the Krishna's form which he displays in Madhuri Rasa, the Kaishorya age, that is the most attractive form. So those devotees who meditate on, on that form in the Amaras Rasa, in the Madhurya Rasa, Ujwala Rasa, are alone meditators of Krishna. <laughs> Krishna, who is full of pastimes, always manifests himself with his realm, only in the pure receptive cognition of such a persons. Now, uh, 
this is again qualified that to whom Lord Krishna will reveal, to those who have pure hearts, uh, that Krishna perform his pastimes to attract foreign conditioned souls. But again, everybody does not see it. Why? Because that heart is not pure enough. Okay. The pastimes of that manifested divine realm, triumphantly dominates in every way all the majesty and beauty of the mundane world. And these are more attractive pastimes so that soul could be attracted back to Krishna. So this is the, the meaning here. So the verse describes really complete bewilderment of the world by Krishna's pastimes. Those who are fortunate to see them, those who are fortunate to hear, those who are fortunate to be involved, that they will be completely attracted with all attractive Krishna's pastimes. This is explained here. And Lord's pleasing charm, that he is so attractive that even Cupid is attracted by him. That's also described here. So Srila Prabhupada uh, explains further in his purpose in Bhagavatam. Here, Srila Prabhupada says, when the Lord manifests himself on this earth, he partially displayed the activities of his pleasure potency in his Rasa Leela, just to attract the conditioned souls who are all after the phantasmagoria pleasure potency in degraded sex enjoyment. So here the reason is given why Lord displays these pastimes within material world. He is already enjoying the same pastimes in the spiritual world. For him, there is no need to go anywhere else or to do anything else. But to recollect the soul, to, to attract them, those conditioned souls who are in material world, to attract them back to him, to attract them to his path, he performs these amazing pastimes. Why Jiva came to material world? To enjoy separately from Krishna. That's the misfortune of Jiva. The Jiva thinks that I will enjoy separately from Krishna. And the biggest enjoyment of material world is sex enjoyment. So now the Krishna is showing his pastimes are more attractive. By hearing of Krishna's pastimes, one will conquer the lust. One will actually be able to overcome this attraction to Maya. So Krishna performs these pastimes. Of course, he gives pleasure to his devotees by that. And he shows to the conditioned souls his transcendental opulence, his transcendental attractiveness. That he shows them that this is where you belong, Jivas. You belong to the spiritual world. You belong to me. You belong, your Swarupa is to again, again, and eternally engage in loving pastimes with me. And here Krishna, when Krishna comes, he performs these pastimes, which are Ananda Chinmaya Rasa, which are the Ujjwala Rasa, which are Madhurya Rasa, which no other avatars perform. The most attractive, he fully displays his most attractive uh, form there. So here the Srila um, Jiva Goswami commentary here explains that Ananda Chinmaya refers to Madhurya Rasa. And um, the, he explains that Govinda appears to some degree in the minds of those entities, uh, of those entities, those devotees who worship him, by embracing them. Atmataya. Atmataya means by embracing them with his Madhura Rasa. Means embracing their mind in Madhura Rasa. Means making these Lilas be attracted, attractive to his devotees. And um, here you can see, yeah, word by word he explained this. Ananda Chinmaya, blissful cognitive. So Srila Goswami explained that this word Ananda Chinmaya refers to lowing pastimes. And um, these most attractive pastimes of this Madhurya Rasa are reflected, Pratifalam. Pratifalam being reflected. Since the Lord appears in Jiva also in material world as a Paramatma in their heart. So Paramatma inspires the soul who is more, the more we are pure, the more we control our mind, our senses, the follow pure path, sinless life, and practice devotional service, the more Paramatma uh, allows us or guides us to be attracted to Krishna's Leelas, the more we can remember Krishna, the more we can feel Oh, this is so nice, Krishna. More absorption is done through the function of Paramatma, who is Krishna in the heart of everyone. And uh, endowed with part of his all enchanting nature. The form causes remembrance, smaratamu petya. So we know that Paramatma from Paramatma, 
Smriti Gyanam Apohanamsha, the remembrance comes from Paramatma. So this remembrance here will be remembrance of Krishna's Leelas, that we'll be able to actually remember Krishna. Devotees who are absorbed, they'll be able to remember Krishna, they'll be able to recollect his pastimes. Of course, uh, anyway, we'll come to that. These are, these are uh, if one is attracted with Krishna's Leelas in Madhurya Rasa, this is a very high level of devotional service. Huh? At this level at, that we are now at, it's a um, great achievement for us to chant Krishna's name 16 rounds, you know, remember, remember him, come for darshan, hear the class. Uh, Prabhuji, did you, rem did you offer? Did you remember to offer what you eat? Oh, yeah, yeah I forgot to offer. Okay. So you, our remembrance is uh, now the weakest point. So in Satsanga, it's very easy. We remind each other. We remind each other of Krishna. We were till like we were Shika. Okay, I'm not devotee, but at least I'm looking like devotee. I'm trying to remember. That I should become devotee. I'm trying to serve as a devotee. In association of devotees, it's easier to remember Krishna. In Krishna's places of pastimes, Vrindavan, Dwaraka, Puri, Mayapur, Mathura, they're easier to remember Krishna. So, the, all these things at this moment, again, same principle is that Paramatma is helping us to remember him, to remember, to not forget. Smartavya satatam vishnu, vismartavya, najatushin. That always we should remember him and never forget Krishna. Always we should remember, always we should remember that's possible when we have love for Krishna. Just like mother loves the child. So whatever mother does, whether she's buying some vegetables or cooking or cleaning or talking to somebody, even while talking to some your neighbor, mother is always in the corner of mind thinking, where is my baby? Where is my child? So that, that quality of love, I mean, this is comparison to material, but that quality of love is called smartavya satatam vishnu. Always remember. When we have love of God, then it's easy, always remember. Now, naturally, we are remembering sense gratification. That is natural, which is unnatural. But when you are diseased, it's like this. Naturally, we forget Krishna. Spontaneously, we forget. If we don't push, we forget. Yeah? If somebody doesn't remind us, Prabhuji, Mangalart. Oh, yeah, right, okay. Otherwise, otherwise, forget. <laughs> uh, come for the program, come for the class, chant your rounds, do this, do that. Have you read today Prabhupada's books? Oh, all right. So what is it? remembering, remembering, remembering. No? So this, this practice will purify us and then become slowly, slowly, slowly more and more attraction, more and more attraction that becomes natural to remember him. Actually, natural is to remember, as you see in Prabhupada's purpose. So this is the idea that this form Paramatma causes remembrance, Maratamu Petya. In this way, he conquers all persons in the world. The five chapters, Okay, so then Srila Goswami quotes from Bhagavatam, um, explaining the charm of Krishna's attractive features, how actually Krishna ultimately conquers everyone. Because all of the conditioned souls will be delivered one day. By the desire of Krishna, by the desire of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, by the desire of all the pure devotees, ultimately everybody will be delivered. Delivered means conquered by Krishna's Ananda Chinmaya Rasa, Mataya Manasu that ultimately everyone will be attracted to Krishna. And Krishna is so beautiful. Once you are attracted to him, then we can give up all other attractions. So Srila Prabhupada speaks about that. He explains in Chaitanya Charitamrita, of course, <clears throat> he quotes the shlokas. I mean, the shlokas of Chaitanya Charitamrita, Prabhupada explains in the purpose. Here, in Adi Lila, he said, taking these pure devotees with me, <clears throat> I shall descend and sport in various wonderful ways. Unknown, even in Vaikuntha, I shall broadcast such pastor by which even I am amazed. So this is now Krishna speaking, that he comes. He comes with his liberated souls, with devotees from spiritual world, with whom he is eternally enjoying this person. He said, hey, conditioned souls, look, come, you want to be happy, be with me. Dance with me, sing with me, play with me. Not that you are playing with Maya, thinking I'll be happy in material world. So he displays, he, dis he brings his dham with him. He brings his associates with him. He brings those pastimes with him and shows to everyone, this is what we're supposed to do. You've forgotten, you've forgotten me. You have forgotten me. So okay, it comes to remind us on, on our eternal constitutional position. So in the purpose here, Prabhupada explains, 
There are innumerable Vaikuntha planets in spiritual sky, and in all of them, the Lord accepts the service rendered by his eternal devotees in reverential mood. This is Vaikuntha situation. Therefore, Lord Krishna's, Krishna presents his most confidential pastimes as he enjoys them in his transcendental realm. Such pastimes are so attractive that they attract even the Lord, and thus he relishes them in the form of Lord Chaitanya. So now when Krishna comes, <clears throat> he shows pastimes which are not revealed even in Vaikuntha, that even Mahavishnu was attracted by them. No? Even Lord, we know from Krishna book from Bhagavatam, that the Lord wanted to see Arjuna and Krishna. And even what to speak of pastimes of Vrindavan. No? So these are special, special uh, manifestations of, of uh, Krishna's pastimes, that even, even himself in the form of Vishnu is attracted to them. So then again, continues the Chaitanya Charitamrita. The influence of Yoga Maya will inspire gopis with the sentiment that I'm their paramour. Now, the nature of these lilas is described. The Ujjwala lila, the Madhurya lila is described. Lord says that, look, these are not attraction, mundane attractions. These are all activities of spiritual potency. The attraction of gopis to Krishna may appear mundane for the untrained eye or the neophyte person. But actually here, Shastra reveals us that these are all arrangements of yoga maya, spiritual potency. So Krishna speaks, the influence of yoga maya will inspire the gopis with the sentiment that I am their parama. So Srila Prabhupada explains this important purpose. Yoga maya is the name of internal potency that makes the Lord forget himself and become an object of love for his pure devotee in different transcendental mellows. Now, to enjoy pastimes with the gopis as a lover, the Krishna's own godhoodness, Krishna's own position as a supreme Ishwara, Jagadishwara, uh, he gives up that voluntarily in the mind. He, he doesn't want to think about it, I'm Supreme Lord. He, he allows a very close relationship with his devotees. And for that purpose, that Aishwarya Jnana, knowledge of his own opulences, by yoga maya potency, by his own will, is withdrawn from his mind and from the mind of gopis, gopas, his rishvasis. Because if, if uh, Mother Yashoda fully, fully, is all the time fully aware that Krishna is Supreme Lord, it's very difficult to express what's all your answer. You know, Krishna will say, Mother Yashoda, give me some milk. What milk? You created milk, you created cow, you created, you know. Is, you know, there's no question of service. There's full dependence. And Krishna said, come on, you help me up and, you know, give me some milk. That's what I want. So for that purpose, this yoga maya interferes. Krishna's spiritual potency, working fully under Krishna's control, makes, makes the feelings released that by removing Aishwarya Jnana from the mind of Krishna and of the gopas and gopis. So it's not that they are playing and pretending. It's not a drama. Actually, I'm playing some drama, but you know, I'm Gokul, but I'm playing drama now. It's not like that. It's real feeling is expressed. These are real spiritual feelings. It's not that Krishna says, oh, mother, I'm hungry. And he's thinking, ah, you think I'm hungry, but I swallow all the world. I'm the almighty time. I'm the Yogadishwar. He's not thinking like, he's thinking I'm hungry. He's really relishing those feelings. If Chaitanya Mahaprabhu comes, he's also relishing those feelings that I'm devotee of Krishna. So these are all the activities of spiritual yoga maya potency. Mm -hmm. This yoga maya potency creates a spiritual sentiment in the minds of the damsels of Raja, by which they think of Krishna as their paramour. The sentiment is never to be compared to mundane illicit sexual love. It has nothing to do with sexual psychology. Although the pure love of such devotees seems to be sexual, one should know for certain that nothing can exist in this cosmic manifestation that has no real counterpart in the spiritual field. So, here, the sex life in material world is based on selfishness, is based on the personal desire to be enjoyed. In the spiritual world, these uh, desires are directed towards Krishna. It's meant to give pleasure to Krishna. It's not meant to give pleasure to the devotee. It gives pleasure to the devotee because Krishna is pleased. That comes automatically, but that's not the intention. Just like the the... Again, the purest, the purest thing what we experience in material world is mother's love for the child. That's the purest one. It's not that mother is taking, bathing the child and dressing him and feeding him and say, 
one day when you grow up, you will serve me and give me money and pay all this back. No, that, that's not mother. That's the putana or something, you know. That's the maidservant maybe, you know. But not the mother, no. So mother is serving, serving, serving out of love, not to out of expectation. So similarly, and is not expecting, I will be happy by that, you know. And, uh, and how mother gets happiness, uh, common man cannot understand. Maybe even husband cannot understand. <laughs> oh, oh, you pass stool. It said in Shastra that the child pass stool is just like sandal pulp for the mother. They didn't mention the father. <laughs> because that love is so pure. That is, oh, you pass a stool. And father, oh, he pass a stool. <laughs> it's a different. <clears throat> of course, father also, not that they have no feelings and attachments, but definitely mother's love is excels the father's feelings in that sense, in that relationship. So, same thing, devotees in spiritual world, gopis, they dress nicely for Krishna's pleasure. Not that, oh, I shall enjoy with Krishna. No, I'm not in the center. Krishna is in the center. Krishna wants us to be like this, we'll be like this. Krishna likes that we put flower ornaments, we'll put flower ornaments. Otherwise, no. There's no concept of self-enjoyment. This is the difference between spiritual and material world. No? Okay, Krishnendriya, what is that? Atmendriya, Prithivancha, Tarevoli, Kam, Krishnendriya, Krishnendriya, Priti, Icha, Dhore, Premana. That is the difference. When we want to satisfy our senses, that is calm, that is lust. When we want to satisfy Krishna's senses, that is the love, that is Prem. Even word Prem is misused today, particularly Indian cinema is used Prem, 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 but it's not Prem, it's calm, calm, calm. Sorry, you have to translate properly. You know? Okay, so Prabhupada explains, all material manifestations are emanation of the transcendence. Means that because there is that spiritual attraction between Krishna and his devotees, there is perverted reflection of it in material world. Urdva Mula Madashaka, material world is perverted reflection of spiritual world. Just like these five fingers, you see, if you see the shed, shadow of it, you will see in the shadow also five fingers. But they are black. <laughs> it's not the original one. It's a shadow. It's a perverted reflection. So what happens is that because there is attraction of the features, Krishna likes to see beautiful face of gopis. Gopis like to see beautiful face of Krishna. That attraction is there in spiritual world, arrangement, arranged by Yoga Maya. Now that perverted reflection is what we experience in material world, that man is attracted to woman and woman is attracted to the man. So this is the perverted reflection based on our own interest, our own sense gratification. There in spiritual, based on giving pleasure to Krishna, not for the personal sense gratification. The erotic principles of amorous love reflected in mixed material values are perverted reflections of the reality of spirit. But one can cannot understand the reality unless one is sufficiently educated in spiritual science. So this is, unless you hear from the guru in Parampara, one will not understand Krishna's pastimes with the gopis. You can see there are quite few pandits we met in India when we travel and distributed books. Uh, we met quite few pandits. They like Bhagavad Gita, but they won't speak about Krishna's Ras Lila. They feel uncomfortable. Not for the sense of a pure devotee, feels also not to speak these pastimes in public, but because they cannot understand. Or many people go to Ram, worship easier. Oh, we like Krishna, but Ram is easier to understand in the mind. He's dutiful, he's dharmic, he's, you know. And then even Ram, abundant Sita, how we deal with that? <laughs> That's another problem. <laughs> so it's difficult to understand Krishna's pastimes with material mind, with material intelligence, with, with, with material senses. One must hear from the proper uh, source, from the pure source, from the Guru Parampara. So again, Chaitanya Charitamrita continues. Neither the gopis nor I shall notice this when Yoga Maya puts that feelings in us, attraction. For our minds will always be entranced by one an another's beauty and qualities. So this is Krishna's arrangement, this is Krishna's plan, this is Krishna's potency, that actually the gopis and Krishna spontaneously feel attraction to each other in the spiritual world by the, by the potency of yoga mind. Srila Prabhupada explains, in the spiritual sky, Vaikuntha plants are predominated by Narayana. His devotees have the same features he does, 
and the exchange and devotion that is on platform of reverence, Dasyaras. But above all this Vaikuntha planets is Goloka or Krishna Loka, where the original personality Godhead Krishna fully manifests his pleasure potency in free loving affairs. Since the devotees in material world knew almost nothing about these affairs, the Lord desires to show these affairs to them. In Goloka Vrindavan, there is an exchange of love known as Parakya Rasa. Parakya Rasa means uh, the love between uh, Krishna and the devotee who is apparently uh, out of, uh, how you say, out of marriage, you may say. Out, 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 what? Yeah, who are not married. Now Krishna is not married. Who to Queen Sudwarka is married, to Gopis he is not married. It is something like the attraction of a married woman for a man other than her husband. In the material world, this sort of relation is most abominable because it is a perverted reflection of Rasa in the spiritual world, where it is the highest kind of loving affair. Now we understand that the gopis are Krishna's own creation. The gopis are Krishna's own potences. And then, then when Krishna sets up in their mind that actually uh, I belong to somebody else, but I like Krishna, that paramore uh, feeling is in the mind only. Not that they have other husbands or they are somebody else's wives. They are Krishna's wives only. They are Krishna's devotees only. They belong to Krishna. These are Krishna's internal potences. But to enhance that love, more exciting than a regular marriage is, is that attraction to the something which is prohibited. So this is explored here in the spiritual realm as a more, more attractive, more, more pleasure giving. And that when that is in relation with Krishna, that is perfection. When that perverted reflection that manifests in material, there's a most condemned position that you are trying to enjoy other men's wife. Actually, what is it? You are all the time, even legally married or attracted to another man's wife. Both are illegal because both are Krishna Jeevas meant for Chris, his pleasures. Both are Maya, both are illusion. But there is a Maya and there's Mahamaya also. <laughs> there's a Maya means, okay, you cannot control, so at least get married. Krishna say, I'll, 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 under the rules, regulations, you will be free from attraction to that particular Jeeva, you know, which you consider your wife or your husband. No? But if you're attracted to another wife, that's even worse. That's really big Maya. That's, that's really big obstacle in spiritual life. But in spiritual world, it's opposite, perverted reflection. What is most condemned in material world, that's the highest in the spiritual world. Swakya and Parikya. Parakya rasa. Okay, such feelings between the devotee and Lord are presented by influence of Yoga Maya. The Bhagavad Gita says that devotee of the highest grade are under the care of Daiva Maya. No? Mahatmana Sumam Partha <clears throat> Daivin Prakriti Masha. Oh, yeah, Prabhupada quotes Mahatmana Sumam Partha Daivin Prakriti Masha. Those who are actually great souls, Mahatmas, are fully absorbed in Krishna consciousness, always engaged in service of the Lord. They are under the care of Daivi Prakriti, Yoga Maya. Yoga Maya creates a situation in which devotee is prepared to transgress all regulative principles simply to love Krishna. So therefore you will see in Krishna's Leelas, the gopi says, we left our husbands, we left our house, we came in the middle of the night to meet you. So how, how strong is that attraction to Krishna? That apparently what is dharmic to be loyal and chaste to your husband, that's given up by gopis. Now this is not condemnation of gopis, oh, how bad girls there. No, this is their glorification that they are ready to transcend even mundane morality to please Krishna. What is the highest point of Dharma? To please Krishna, to do what Krishna says. Krishna played the flute and flute says, uh, come meet Krishna. That's what his message of the playing of the flute. Come and meet me. That's the highest Dharma. No? Sarva Dharma Paritya Mami Kam Sharanam Raja. That's the highest Dharma. Give up all other duties, all other Dharmas, all other religious beliefs, systems, rituals, and surrender to me. Mame kam sharanam raja. So gopis, they did that to such an extent. But in material, this is misunderstood. This is misunderstood to be immoral. But that's the highest morality, to give up everything and do what Krishna says. So this, this is explained. A devotee naturally does not like to transgress the laws of reverence for the Supreme Personality Godhead. But by the influence of yoga, he's prepared to do anything 
to love the Supreme Lord better. So Krishna wanted like this. Krishna wants like this pastimes. He arranged in spiritual, this type of situation, and devotees are surrendered to do that. Those under the spell of material energy <coughs> cannot at all appreciate the activities of Yoga Maya. For a conditioned soul can hardly understand the pure reciprocation between Lord and his devotees. But the execute, by executing devotional service under regulative principles, one can become very highly elevated and then begin to appreciate the dealings of pure love under the management of yoga maya. So you see, this is the mystery. If you want to advance the spiritual uh, life, the mind control, sense control is essential. Even married couples are advised to have a um, relationship only for progeny. Even if you are married, sex is not encouraged in spiritual life. Just for progeny, you have children, but okay, no more sex life. Give it up. After that, vanapras, after that, sannyas. And when you are sannyasi, then you discuss about parama or pastimes of Krishna and gopis. So what is the logic? You're giving up everything, and then again, loving affairs, gopis, girlfriends, boyfriends, what is this all about? It's not all about that. It's not mundane. It's a spiritual. It's purifying. It's relishable. It's related to Krishna. Therefore, it's the highest. Before... Mind and sense are controlled. If you discuss those pastimes, you will just invoke lust and do offenses and fall down. So this is this is the system, you know. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he is in public, he was chanting Hare Krishna, singing the Ensign Kirtan. With few pandits, he discussed Vedanta with with Prakashananda Saraswati Saravom Bhavatacharya. With Ramananda Rai, he discussed the topics about gopis. With how many people? With two, three, four people, that's all. With two, three, four confidential devotees, this was discussed. Therefore, you will not find Prabhupada or Gaudiya Vaishnava or anybody discussing these pastimes in the public. Now, what we are discussing, we are not discussing the pastimes of Radha Krishna and Paramulila. We are discussing the tattva of it. We are discussing of philosophy, philosophical understand, understanding of it, how to understand it, actually, how to see it, how to perceive, how to... How to um, um, theoretically understand why Krishna is dancing with the gopis. Because he's Bhagavan, he's supreme enjoyer, you know. He chosen to enjoy in this way, and it's pure, and it's sinless, and it's perfect, and it's most purifying, because it's most pleasing to Krishna. And the spiritual loving sentiments induced by the yoga maya potency, both Lord Sri Krishna and themselves of Raja forget themselves in spiritual rapture, by the influence of such forgetfulness, the attractive beauty of gopis play a prominent part in the transcendental satisfaction of Lord, who has nothing to do with mundane sex. Because spiritual love of Godhead is above everything mundane, the gopis superficially seem to transgress the codes of mundane morality. This perpetually puzzles mundane moralists. <laughs> so Prabhupada is commenting, no? Mundane moralists always have this problem. Even if they like Krishna, even if they go to temple, if they like Gita, but this dealing with Gopis is, is so uncomfortable. Huh? They won't discuss. Even devotees, Gaudiya Vaishnavas, they will not discuss in public, but they will discuss among themselves. Guhyam, Akyati, Prichati, doesn't mean only revealing one's problems to each other, but in the higher level, devotees discuss confidential persons of the Lord. That's the message. Therefore, Yoga Maya acts to cover the Lord and his pastimes from the eyes of mundaners. So now, this is the reason why we cannot see these pastimes. We cannot see this, Krishna Lila. They are eternal. They are eternally going on in Vrindavan, but we are not able to see why. They are eternally covered, pastimes from eyes of mundaners, as confirming Gita, where Lord says that he has the right of not being exposed to everyone. Nam Prakash Sarvasya, Yoga Maya Samanrita. Mudoyam Nabhijana. The acts of Yoga Maya makes it possible for the Lord and the Gopis in loving ecstasy to sometimes meet and sometimes separate. These transcendental loving affairs of Lord are unimaginable to empiricists involved in the impersonal feature of absolute truth. Even Gyanis, who are absorbed in impersonal Brahman, cannot understand this past. They have no clue. That is unimaginable. Therefore, the Lord himself appears before the mundaners to bestow upon them the highest form of spiritual realization and also personally relish its essence. So Bhagavan does two things. 
when he comes to the material world, he shows this most amazing patterns. And one purpose is to attract conditioned soul. Second thing is to relationship himself with his devotees. Both things are done. The Lord is so merciful that he himself descends to take the fallen souls back home to the kingdom of Godhead. Where the erotic principles of Godhead are eternally relished in the real form, this thing from the perverted sexual love so much adored and indulged in by the fallen souls in their diseased condition. So cannot be more clear, the statements of Prabhupada <laughs> cannot be more clear. No? The reason the Lord displays Rasa Lila is essentially to induce all the fallen souls to give up their disease, morality, and religiosity, and to attract them to the kingdom of God to enjoy the, re the reality. No? So there's another reason. One place Srila Prabhupada explains that uh, why Krishna shows Rasa Lila pastimes. When Krishna comes, he comes establish the Dharma, you know, Dharma Samstap, Anartaya, Sambhavam Yuga. He shows what is Dharma, what is highest morality. And then Barasila, he shows that he is supreme also. <laughs> so if you think about it, it shows that, that even if he doesn't follow mundane morality, still he is supreme, sinless. Sin does not affect him. And here is explained by Acharya how and why, because these are not mundane attractions, mundane activities. These are absolute spiritual uh, manifestation of the Krishna's pastimes potency. A person who actually understands what the Rasa Lila is will certainly have to indulge, uh, what is that? Who actually understands what the Rasa Lila is will certainly hate to indulge in mundane sex life. This is result. Actually, if you are hearing pastimes from proper source and if you understand what will be the result of hearing gopis and Krishna meeting and dancing and singing? What will be the result? The result is that you will have no sexual attraction. This you cannot explain if you think that Krishna's patterns are material. Material patterns, when we hear this woman and man, they mingle and this girl and this, that, then lust is inside it. If you are pouring fuel on the fire, fire will become bigger. You know? But here is a cooling water poured on the fire that fire of lust will be extinguished by hearing about Krishna's pastimes. For the realized soul, hearing the Lord's Ras Lila through the proper channel will result in complete abstinence from material sex pleasure. So this is what it is. That's, that's the message. Huh? So somebody may object that, how is this? No, that uh, it's contradictory. Huh? He said that by hearing Krishna's pastimes, loving affairs with the gopis, one is free from lust. And then you come to the temple and ashram you join. And the guru says, look, these books you can read, these books you cannot read. The tattva books we can read, rasa books we cannot read. Actually, it's prohibited for us to read uh, these books which are describing intimate pastimes of gopi and Krishna, like Govinda Lilamrita. Or what is that? Gita Govinda. Hmm? Ujjwal Nilayman is more technical book rather, rather than uh, describing the pastimes itself. No? But one must get special permission from Guru in order for Guru to read or not to read these books. So what's the point? No, it looks contradictory. No? Now you say, if you hear, you'll be free from lust. And then when you come, I want to hear. Don't hear. <laughs> okay. So here, little explanation by Prabhupada. Srila Prabhupada Rameshwar Swami is asking Prabhupada, if I follow regulative principles and go on hearing about Rasa Lila, then I'll be purified. Prabhupada said, you say that. And the Shasta does not say. Shasta says that after you have studied all the nine cantos of Bhagavatam, then enter into 10 canto. Sahaja means they take very easily. Everything is all right. Now I'm perfect. That is Sahaja. Krishna says, to understand me, it will take millions of years. Manushya Nam Sahasya no? And they understand Krishna immediately. That is there. This is called Prakrita Sahaja. Now, you say Prabhupada won that, yes, you will be purified. But first you read first nine cantos. First understand Krishna's tattva. First get purified. Then, then you can do. Okay, let, let's see what, how it goes. Rameshwar says, Krishna's incarnation is so attractive that living entities, the living entities to, to Krishna. So let me read about Rasalila because I'm feeling some attraction. 
Prabhupada said, then why not Kurukshetra Leela? Why Rasli? Why not Kurukshetra Leela? <laughs> uh, Kurukshetra Leela. Krishna Leela is same, absolute. You are attracted to Ras Leela, means you have got sex desire. That's all. So, <laughs> so people who tell, I will discuss only Krishna's Ras Leela, this is the highest. Because they heard somewhere, it's the highest. Our own Goswami says, this is the highest. That is Bhagavad Gita for neophytes. You know. But you are not attracted to Bhagavad Gita. Kurukshetra Leela means simply you are having sex desire. That's what Prabhupada say. I didn't say. Okay, so this is the point that that there is a system, there is a system that we have to get first purified, and then we'll be able to appreciate and understand. Otherwise, it will act complete opposite way. No? So yes, Krishna Ras Leela will purify us from lust, but before eating Ras Leela, we have to read first nine cantos of Bhagavatam. Get purified, focus our mind in Shavanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu Smaranam, Pada Sevanam, Archanam, Vandanam, Dhasyam, Sakyam, Atmani Veda. Then, when we are at that level, then, then naturally it comes. It comes naturally. It's not that artificially, you know. You, it, it must come naturally, spontaneously as we grow in spiritual life. You cannot push, you know. Like, you know, uh, one day um, devotees were shaving in the ashram, and few Gurukulis boys are looking at them. So the devotee is sharing, sharing, and this boy is looking so much. So our Brahmacharya said, so you want to shave also? But you have nothing to shave, you know, you have to wait. Simply by staring at mirror, mustaches won't grow, you know, you have to wait. <laughs> so similarly, you cannot jump over into the Ras Lila pastimes and, you know, bypass all other. It comes naturally, it comes spontaneously. When we grow up spiritually, the mustaches will grow, you know, that's the Krishna's assurance. So, huh? I know it was funny to see because boy was so eager. I also won't. But what you will do? You can put foam and shave the foam. There's no, <laughs> you know, it's ridiculous, you know. Yeah? It's uh, meaningless, no? So, like that. Okay. So then, <clears throat> Srila Jiro Goswami quotes in this shloka, he quotes, that's the main point that Krishna displayed these pastimes, which are attractive even to Cupid, to conquer everyone, to to recollect, to reclaim all the fallen conditioned souls back. And uh, immediately, Shilajir Goswami quotes from Bhagavatam, 10 Kento, to show, to demonstrate that this Krishna's charming features by which he attracts, attracts every conditioned soul. So here, Tasam Avirabhuj Shauri Smayamana Mukhambuja Pitambara Dhara Sragvi Sakshan Manmata Manmataha. So now this is uh, quoted from Ten Kanto Bhagavatam. That uh, then, then Lord Krishna, a smile on his lotus face, appeared before the gopis, wearing a garland and yellow garment. He directly appeared as one who can bewilder the mind of Cupid, who himself bewilders the minds of ordinary people. Manman, manmata Manmataha. Manmata, Cupid, who bewilders minds of everyone, he himself became bewildered by Krishna's beauty. So this is the quote. So here, Srila Goswami explained this, that here the word Manmata means, is similar to phrase in Kata Upanishad, which says, Chakshushas Chakshuhu, the eye of an eye. The eye of an, uh, of an eye. Why, what eye does? Allows us to see make us able to see. So the power of eye to see is Krishna. So he is the eye of the eye. But the power by which eye is able to see, that's Krishna. So similarly, man, manmata, manmataha. The power by which Cupid can attract everyone mind, that's from Krishna. That's Krishna, that, that power. So he can attract the manma, manmata, manmataha, it's same like chakshu, chakshu. No, that eye for an eye, the Cupid of the Cupid. <laughs> this is how you can say it. He's the Cupid for a Cupid. Krishna is eye for an eye. The power of eye to see is Krishna. So this is explanation by Srila Jiva Goswami. So he's the source of whatever bewilderment Cupid can cause by love. He is the source even of that power of Cupid to bewilder others. He is source of that also. And then he himself bewilders the Cupid. Okay, now Srila Sridhar Swami quotes on this. Srila Sridhar Swami explains. 
Sakshan manmata manmataha means the lust arising in the mind of lust himself, Cupid, who bewilders the entire world. In other words, directly the bewilderer of even him. Sakshat manmata mataha. The directly Krishna appears directly as one who bewilders the Cupid. That's what it is explained by Shri Swami. Now Srila Jiva Goswami explains that in Bhagavatam commentary in this way. Sakshan means directly Cupid. Sakshan manmata refers to Pradyumnas because there are many Chaturyuha expansions and Shastra says that Cupid himself takes form of Pradyumna. Now this is transcendental Cupid. This is not mundane Cupid, Pradyumna. This is a transcendental Cupid. So now directly Cupid refers to Pradyumnas who are within the various Chaturyuhas. Krishna is their Cupid in the sense that he is the original agent manifesting their Cupidhood. In the same manner, at the phrase of Brihad Arena Kopanishad says, Chakshushas, Chakshuhu. He is the eye of all eyes. Power of eye to see comes from him. So, similar, Krishna is Cupid of all Cupids. Because Pradyumna is explained in the Shastra that his position is transcendental Cupid, appeared in Krishna Lila. Uh, but he himself, Chaturyuha, is expansion from Krishna. Okay, Balaram expands first from Krishna and from Balaram, Adi Chaturyuha comes. From Adi Chaturyuha, um, that uh, Sankarshan comes Lord Narayana. From Narayana, Dvitiya Chaturyuha comes. Where again you have uh, Pradyumna there. So how many Chaturyuhas are there in many, many universes? So many Cupids are there. So he said that Sakshan Manmata that Cupid who give him power to that Cupid of Pradyumna, who are many, many Cupids, that is the original agent manifesting their Cupidhood, who gives them power to attract others, that is Krishna. So now not refers only to mundane Cupid, but refers to spiritual Cupid also here, that Krishna is source of that. Srila Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur explains, commentary on same shloka. Coming there to bewilder Cupid, even though Cupid bewilders the entire world. So Krishna comes to material world and everybody is bewildered by Cupid, but he came Sakshat Manmata, manmataha. He came to bewilder him also. No, because ultimately even Cupid has to be delivered. No, even Cupid has to be delivered. <laughs> okay. Now the Leela is mentioned. When Cupid came in the form of a woman to bewilder Krishna, he himself got bewildered. No? So we know the Leela Nara Narayan Rishi. Okay. The idea is that when Cupid himself saw the beauty of Krishna, he became struck by his own arrows and fell into bewilderment. By this way, we understand that when they enjoy with each other, Krishna and the gopis are being struck by the arrows of that Cupid who belongs to Lord's internal nature, not those of mundane Cupid, who bewilders the entire world, since after all, he has no domain in their affairs. So this is very clear by Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur. An attraction between Krishna and gopis are done by the transcendental Cupid, not by, the, by Krishna's own arrangements. We should understand that he's appearing as directly the bewilderer of the mind of Cupid at that particular time, revealing his own enchanting sweetness was for the purpose of making gopis forget that the stress of separation from him. So that's particular in this shloka. Krishna appears so attractive just to relieve gopis from the pangs of separation. You know? So this is the main point in this verse, you know, that Krishna effortlessly conquers all the three worlds by his beauty by his enchanting, enhancing pastimes of Madhurya Rasa. Even effortlessly, he can attract everyone. So this is meditation by advanced devotee on Krishna's transcendental form as Kama Dev. We know in Gayatri Mantra, we were discussing the Kama Gayatri, Lord is meditated as a Kama Deva. Actually devotees, all of us who got this the second initiation, we got this mantra, Kama Deva. We are meditating on Lord in the Form as a transcendental cupid. That's the ultimate idea. And that's the ultimate idea to be attracted to Krishna in the Madhurya Rasa. So, so now the Gaudiya Vaishnavas bring the point of this uh, Manmataha. We, they bring that, that explanation to another level. There is another uh, concept here. Srila Prabhupada explains. Srimati Radharani is the center of all Vrindavan's activities. In Vrindavan, Krishna is the instrument of Srimati Radharani. I mean, this is, this is now that we don't discuss in public, but Prabhupada wrote it in the Parapas on Chaitanya Charitamrita to clarify philosophy. 
in Vrindavan. Krishna is the instrument of Srimati Radharani. Krishna is Supreme Lord. Therefore, all the inhabitants of Vrindavan still chant Jai Radhe. From Krishna's own statement given here, it appears that Radharani is the queen of Vrindavan and that Krishna is simply her decoration. Krishna is known as Madan Mohan, the enchanter of Cupid, but Srimati Radharani is the enchanter of Krishna. Consequently, Srimati Radharani is called Madana Mohana Mohini, the enchanter of the enchanter of Cupid. Okay, so that's about this explanation. <laughs> So these are very exalted matters, okay? These are very exalted matters, and uh, we should not misunderstand Krishna's affairs to be mundane. And we should not be ashamed of, of Krishna's discussing this pastimes, also in the sense, explaining the mystery of them. We can basically explain that these are not uh, ordinary living entities, gopis. These are eternal liberated souls. These are eternal potencies of the Lord. These are Krishna's own creation. Uh, so we can preach, we can explain why Krishna is dancing with other man's wife and say, are you married? Yes, I'm married. You are dancing with another jiva meant for Krishna's pleasure. You are dancing with Krishna's wife. You are the culprit. That's the reality, you know, but it takes a little time to explain. So first we ask them to chant and to take some prasada and read some books. Come. It takes a little time to understand this. That actually, before blaming Krishna, you should understand that I'm in Maya, I'm in illusion. Anything, anything, anything to you say, oh, what a nice day. You are in joy, you're not thinking of Krishna. If you think, oh, Krishna arranged nice days, so we can throw him nicely, that is good. But even thinking, what a nice day today, that's also sense gratification. That's also against spiritual realization, against progress in spiritual life. Even smelling one flower without offering to Krishna is Maya. But to speak of thinking, this is my wife, this is my house, this is my property, this is my ahamma meti. That's my, and that's illusion. Okay, so that those persons should not be misunderstood to be mundane. And once we become attracted to those persons, then we can overcome the lust. So now, by being absorbed, Shavanam Kirtana Vishnu Smaranam Smaratam Upete Lilaiten Smaranam Upete To be absorbed in Krishna Lilas helps us to actually overcome Maya. Actually, therefore, we are we are to hear. You can see in uh, Nanda Mara speaks to Uddhava when Uddhava came to Vrindavan, when all the Rajvasis were thinking of Krishna in separation. How much helped them to absorb? How much they were absorbed, and how much actually they were they were uh, relieved from their separation by thinking of Krishna and Krishna's pastimes. Here Nanda Mara says, Smaratam Krishna Viryani, Lila Panga, Nirikshitam. As we remember the wonderful deeds Krishna performed, his playful silo glances, his smiles and his words, Udava, we forget all our material engagements. So this is the thing, this is the perfection of life, that we can mold our life in such a way that 24 hours a day we can remember Krishna. How? By hearing about Krishna's pastimes, by chanting, by hearing about his qualities, by hearing about his dealings with the devotees. That's why we have Bhagavatam, that's why we have Gita, that's why we have this Mahabharata, Ramayana, that we can fully absorb in our thoughts. And then we forget material engagements. Then Nandamaraj continue. When we see the places where Mukunda enjoyed his sporting pastimes, the rivers, hills, forests, he decorated with his feet, one mind our minds become totally absorbed in him. So therefore, it is recommended in association with devotees, go to the holy places, hear from Bhagavatam, chant his name, worship the deities, correct? These are the five most prominent aspects in devotional service, recommended to practice. You know? And then uh, Shukadu Goswami concludes, Thus, intensely remembering Krishna again and again. It is Sanskritya, Sanskritya. You see that? Nanda Krishna anu, Anurakta. Krishna Anurakta. Krishna Anurakta means attraction to Krishna, attachment to Krishna. No, it is Sanskrita, Sanskrita. Nanda Krishna Anurakta Di. So, thus intensely remembering Krishna again and again, Nanda Maharaj, his mind completely attached to the Lord, felt extreme anxiety and felt silent, overcome by strength of his love. Now, this anxiety is a spiritual anxiety. This is not material suffering. He say, oh, you'll be free from the 
material bondage, yes. But here is mention anxiety. But this anxiety is transcendental ecstasy. This anxiety is anxiety is transcendental ecstasy. It gives so much pleasure to think of Krishna's separation is more pleasing than to be directly in touch, in contact, in presence of Krishna. So this is explained here. And uh, Srila Prabhupada explains this, that this is, our, this is our process, that hearing about Krishna, we want to become attracted to Krishna. Nama, Guna, Rupa, Leela, like that. Prabhupada says like this, Maya Sakta, Manav Parta, Yoga, Myunja, Madashaya. Krishna says, Maya Sakta. Now become attracted to me. Gita. Now here, Osana Prita, Arjun, how by practicing yoga in full consciousness of me, with mind attached to me, Maya Sakta Mana, you can know me in full, free from doubt. Maya Sakta, Prabhupada explains, to become attracted by Krishna. Krishna means attracted. Krishna, Akasatir. Krishna means attractive, just like magnetic stone, attractive. Naturally, the iron will be attracted by the stone. But the iron, if it is rustic, it cannot attract. It cannot attract. Similarly, Krishna is attractive, and we are part and parcels of Krishna. We are also attracted by Krishna. But because we are now covered by the Maya Ras, we are not attracted. This Maya Ras has to be polished. Then you will be attracted. Otherwise, Krishna is attractive. Krishna means attractive. So Prabhupada explained with a simple example, no? simple analogy, why we are not attracted. There is a rust is there. They have to polish. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. We are polishing. Chaito Darpana Marjan. We are purifying the heart. We are polishing. We are making soul to shine and be free from all these anarthas in the heart. When asked how to become free from lust, Bhaktisan Saraswati Thakur explains. This is quotes from Bhaktisan Saraswati Thakur. Having lusty desires means we want to enjoy sense gratification. It is the living entity's duty to serve the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Aversion to the Lord's service drowns us in an ocean of material misery. If we wish to become liberated from that misery, we must serve the non-envious servant of Krishna. Now this is the secret. Service to Krishna starts with service to Guru, service to devotee. This is how service to Krishna starts. Huh? Service to non-envious servant of Krishna. That is the only remedy. Krishna's servants alone can protect us from lust. We tend towards lustiness because we are not inclined to serve Krishna, the transcendental Cupid. The slightest disturbance. Now this is why he say here transcendental Cupid. We tend towards lustiness because we are not inclined to serve Krishna, who is transcendental Cupid. This is amazing. He is so attractive, but still we are not attracted by him because of maya, because of illusion. Just like sugar can is so sweet, but when you have joined this, you, 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 you can't take it. Anything, even thinking of something sweet, you could throwing out, you know, you cannot. But this is disease condition. How is it possible? Everybody else is, come on, it's sweet. Oh, it's bitter. Well, oh, I cannot, just even smelling, I'll throw it. It's an unnatural condition. So same thing. Now, Krishna, Krishna, oh, why are you talking about Krishna? Talk a little bit about sport, talk about Bollywood, talk about Aishwara Rai. Why are you all the Krishna, Krishna, Krishna? You'll go mad. You're chanting all day, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. You'll go mad. No? <laughs> no? But they don't understand. The man is thinking, he has joined us, and you are drinking in front of him sugar can juice. One cup, second cup, third cup, fourth cup. I said, what are you doing? Well, you know, it's impossible. You know, I can't even see you drinking. I vomit. Because <laughs> you are sick. That's the point. We are in Maya, we are sick. We feel no attraction. Although he is transcendental Cupid, but we have no attraction. The slightest disturbance in the attempt to satisfy that lust makes us angry. And all kinds of problems come from that. No? Kamat Sanjay Kroda. What is it? What is it? How it goes? Kamat Kroda Bijayat. When lust is not satisfied, anger comes. When lust is satisfied, greed comes. Anyway, it's not good. No? Krodo, Bhavati, Samo, Smriti Vibra, Smriti Brahmasya, Buddhi Nasya, Buddhi Nasya, Pranasyati. Then we forget. We forget who we are, what we are, what they are shouting, doing, beating. I've done, you know. I didn't want to, but I was angry. I couldn't, you know, mess. Lasty desire is the mother of all sense gratification. The only occupation of pure spirit soul is to gratify the transcendental cupid senses. Rishikaina, Rishikesha, Sevanam Bhakti Ruchati. One who acts for this purpose 
find the seat of lustful desire is destroyed in his service and surrenders to Krishna. No? So this is the system. So Prabhupada advises this to follow this. Devotee asks, it is said Srimad Bhagavat and the Jasadev was afraid that Sutta Goswami, when he was born, would leave home because he was already a liberated soul. Now look at this discussion with Prabhupada. Devotee is asking Prabhupada that Yasadev had a son, Shukadeva Goswami. And he was afraid that once he, because he was so absorbed in Srimad Bhagavatam, no? Was it? He was self realized soul. He will not stay at home. Vyasadev, who is Vyasadev, he was attached, attracted, attached to his son, to his family. So he was afraid, oh, my son will leave home. He's liberated soul. Prabhupada said, yes. But he was attracted to Krishna's pastimes. Yes. That is the sign of liberated soul. Because to become attracted by Krishna, that's our normal condition. So he was liberated. Therefore, normally he became attracted with Krishna's pastimes. That is the normal life. One who is not attracted by Krishna's pastimes, he'll be attracted by President Jones, Johnson's pastimes. There was some mess with President Johnson at that time. One has to be attracted. One has to be attracted by the dog's pastimes. Don't you see a person how he is serving the dog? The dog stands, passes urine, he also stands, the owner, no? You see? He's a human being and he is waiting for dog passing urine. How much he is attending the pastimes of dog? So if you're not attracted to Krishna person, we'll be attracted to Maya. And then look at our position. I don't want to serve Krishna. And then you go, and whenever dog wants to stop, you have to stop. Who is taking whom for the walk? Is dog taking you or you are taking dog? You really have to think about it, no? So if you are not attracted by past sense of God, then you'll have to be attracted by past sense of dog. There is no other alternative, either Maya or Krishna. The atheists, agnostics, they deny Krishna's past sense. Therefore, they remain attracted by persons of this material world. So this is so clear. They cannot be more clear, no? So what is the point? The point is that Krishna Bhakti, love of God is already in the heart. There's nothing new. There's nothing artificial to be imposed. Nothing to be hypnotized or brainwashed or something. Actually, love is in our hearts for God. But because now we are covered by this ego, by selfish desire, by misunderstanding, by ignorance, we are trying to direct that love towards other jiva, towards material world, towards sense gratification, towards money, towards this and that. So Prabhupada explains, Nitya Siddha Krishna Bhakti Sadhu Kabulai. Pure love of Krishna is eternally establishing hearts of living entities. It is not something to be gained from another source. When the heart is purified by hearing and chanting, this love naturally awakens. It is not unnatural, Prabhupada says. Otherwise, how you European, American, you are so much attracted to Krishna. If Krishna is artificial and Krishna conscious is artificial something, so how you sh should be attracted? That they are surprised. No? People say, why should foreigners follow Hinduism? It's nothing to do with foreigners and Hinduism. It's about soul being attracted to Krishna, to God. It's nothing on material platform. Oh, very surprising seeing foreigners chanting Hare Krishna. You are surprised the soul is serving God. Yeah, it's a surprise in material world to anybody who serves God. <laughs> but it's not material platform. That's the point, no? They're attracted because that attraction is there already. We are trying simply to awaken that attraction. Shavanadi Shuddha Chitta Kare Udai. The matter is already there. Just let the young man and young woman, the attraction is already there. Nitya Siddha. The attraction is already there. You don't have to uh, kind of study for it. You know? It is natural. When they come near, talk a little confidentially, then attraction increases. Not that an artificial attraction. Similarly, our attraction for Krishna is already there. Therefore, that is Vrindavan picture. Vrindavan, everything is attracted with Krishna. That is Vrindavan. Animals, trees, flowers, land, and the covered boys, elderly covers men, Nanda Maharaj and others, all are attracted to Krishna. This is Vrindavan. The Yamuna water, everything, fruits, flowers, everything, that is Vrindavan. So Krishna is center of attraction. You might have read, that when Brahma stole all Krishna's associates, he created himself again, all of them. And everyone was feeling more attracted by Krishna. So this is natural. This is not a nature. Our position is natural position, to be attracted by Krishna. If you do not become attracted by Krishna, that is unnatural. And to become attracted by Krishna, that is not unnatural. That is natural. So this is all explained. Um, so here, Srila Prabhupada, 
concludes. So we want to revive our natural position, uncovered position. Now we are covered by dust, by dirt, by, cor by corroding materials. So we have to cleanse this. Therefore, the bhakti process is sarvopadi vinirmuktam. That is what Prabhupada says. Okay, I'll stop here because already we are one hour uh, with this class. So if anybody has any questions, if Krishna uh, uses yoga maya potency to be attracted by the gopis or for any spiritual pastimes whatsoever as a child or as a in any um, playing with the gopas or anything yoga maya potency is always act so now the question is that sometimes people misunderstand that yoga my potency is higher than Krishna. No, that is Krishna's voluntarily submission. Krishna is voluntarily asking this potency to act. And the proof is that any moment, his godhood, his powers are at his tip of the fingers. Just like in uh, Chaitanya Lila, Chaitanya voluntarily submerged himself in the thoughts of Krishna, I'm devotee of Krishna. And that's what he relishes. He came. Krishna himself came. Krishna Varna, Krishna Krishna, Sango Panga, He himself came, Krishna, to relish the position of a devotee. It's one of the reasons of Krishna's Chaitanya's appearance. So now because he's devotee, sometimes people say, oh, he's not Krishna. You see, he's devotee. No? But whenever needed, he showed Shadbuj form. He showed to Ramananda Rai. He showed to Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya. He showed two hands of Krishna, two hands of Ram, two hands of Chaitanya, no? So, not that Yoga Maya has power over Krishna. That is his own arrangement. That's his own submission. You know, that's by his own will, he submits himself for the feelings. But that does not make him incapable or less God or, or under control or anybody. He's never under control of anybody. So this is contradictory quality of Krishna that he can do that. He can be under Yoga Maya and be controller of Yoga Maya simultaneously. No contradiction. And he shows this again and again, again and again in his pastimes. Like to Mother Yashoda, he's asking as a child, no? So Mother says, you are eating mud. I'm not eating mud. Open your mouth. And then he displays his godhood, no? So where is Yoga Maya at that time? Again in his service, no? So then the, the Mother Yashoda was bewildered by Aishwarya. What is this now? What happened to my boy? <laughs> what is this in his mouth? <laughs> so you can see that Krishna can display, um, he can be in and out of Yoga Maya's covering potency as he likes. This is his potency. She is not independent. Krishna is independent. So that's the understanding, you know. Okay. Thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Sri Brahma Samhita Ki Jai. Gaur Premananda.